Alright guys, how's it going? Three years ago, AMD started a mission to set the bar with Radeon software. By bar, they mean big annual releases. It all really started back in 2014 when they released their Catalyst Omega drivers. This was AMD's final driver on their old Catalyst software suite, which was generally despised for its unintuitive interface and sluggish performance. The Omega drivers became famous for a very large performance increase, the likes of which we rarely see today, but more on that later. The real big change came in 2015 with the Radeon software Crimson Edition. I actually did a video on that, one of my first tech videos in fact, and as you can see it's a lovely looking interface, much more intuitive and also very responsive. It's safe to say that in those areas, Crimson definitely raised the bar. The 2016 Crimson Relive Edition was more of an iteration, with the main upgrade here coming with Relive. AMD finally getting their response out to NVIDIA's screen capture software Shadowplay. But now, at the end of 2017, AMD are raising the bar again. And this is the first slide in the presentation, from great to greatness. With a start like that, they really better deliver. So let's take a closer look at the new Radeon Software Adrenaline Edition. Artfully designed, meticulously crafted, incredibly intuitive and utterly beautiful. And it's named after the Adrenaline Rose. Now we'll start off with a quick look at performance, but don't get too excited, because unlike in 2014 with the release of the Omega Driver, this Adrenaline release is definitely not focused on performance, and AMD were very keen to point that out in fact. The reason for this is pretty simple. Now that AMD are known for bringing out these big yearly releases in December, this did lead to some in the press, myself included in fact, of suggesting that maybe they were holding back big performance gains to try and get a big headline grabbing update, just like they did with Omega. And interestingly enough, it was maybe around about a year ago when Raja, Raja Kaduri, he started disavowing the whole fine wine thing, and we started to hear AMD talking more about day one drivers and constant driver improvements. Now that makes a lot of sense, you certainly don't want the reputation of holding back driver releases for big updates. So like I said, AMD went to great pains to point out that this is not what the Adrenaline release is all about. But of course, people want to see bar charts, they want to see improvements. So what AMD has done is shown a bunch of improvements in popular games. Going from Crimson Relive Edition to today's Adrenaline Edition, it looks like an average of around about 15% there, which is a pretty decent increase in fact over the course of the year. And this is with the RX 480 graphics card. So these are pretty impressive ongoing improvements throughout the year. What was possibly more interesting was AMD claiming that they had reduced latency in certain titles. And this is from the November Crimson Relive Edition driver. And down at the bottom right, we can see they're using Vega 64. So the improvements are ongoing, not just in frame rate, but also with latency reduction. I've asked AMD for more details on this, and I'll let you know at some point in future. As we can see, the improvements are quite slight in some cases. Cases, but measurable, and this is at 1080p with the highest preset. As you will quickly see, the Adrenaline release is absolutely massive. They have thrown everything in here, including the kitchen sink. The only way I can possibly cover this is by going over the slides one at a time. Here we can see borderless windowed multi-GPU support, with an interesting doubling plus of frame rate. Frame rate target control, which is basically a maximum frame rate limiter, now supports Vulcan, with up to 70% lower average GPU power while playing Doom. That is a massive drop. Obviously we're talking the difference between maybe 200 frames per second and 60 frames per second. But if 60 frames per second is all you need, why not save the power? This next slide is an interesting one, and it's one I expect to see even more of going forward. You can say what you like about mining, but AMD recognises the value that miners bring to the company, and they have now added compute profiles to the driver, delivering greater performance for compute workloads, and they're using the example of up to 15% greater hash rate while mining Ethereum with a Radeon RX 570. It's a pretty interesting one. If you're just doing a little bit of mining using your same gaming system, then this means you don't need to mess around with different drivers. But this is a pretty clear statement of intent from AMD, and I do expect to see more of this going forward. Now I get asked a lot about Linux, and I generally ignore it because I simply do not use the Linux operating system, and I never have. But over the past year or two, AMD has clearly been upping their game on Linux, and with Radeon software for Linux, you now have one suite containing both the open and closed source software stacks an AMD Vulkan open source driver with the full source code access coming soon. But moving on to what the Radeon Adrenaline Edition is really all about, the core technologies behind the release. 
and most of these you'll be well aware of. Starting off with Watman, which is AMD's graphics power management tool. What's new in Watman is the ability to load and save profiles. This is something requested by the users. And now you can set up a bunch of profiles, save them as you like, and you can even share custom profiles. I'm not entirely sure that's something I would want to do, given that you can mess around with voltages and all that. But generally speaking, stuff like voltages and clocks are all within reasonable levels. Just be careful when loading profiles that you might not be entirely sure about. Interestingly, Watman was voted number three feature by the Radeon users. If you're wondering, you can actually leave feedback by clicking on this star. So the second core technology is Radeon Chill, which is another power saving feature, which works by dynamically regulating frame rate based on your movements in game. Now I showed this in a previous video, my MSI RX 580 review video and I'll show it again towards the end of this one. What's new in Chill? It's pretty massive in actual fact, as it now supports every single game. Up until this point, it was only a handful of the more popular games, stuff like League of Legends and World of Warcraft, but they've changed the algorithm and it basically works on everything, DX11, DX12 and Vulcan. And according to the engineers, they haven't found a single game where it doesn't work. To me, this is pretty big news because the biggest drawback for Chill for me was the fact that it only worked in so many games. Now that it works in every single game out there, this is a big deal. And I'll talk more about this later. Radeon Chill really does dramatically lower power consumption. It does work in a similar fashion to the frame rate target control, that is by limiting frame rate. But Chill is quite a bit better than that because of how it dynamically regulates frame rates based on your movements in game. The real point of it is simply by lowering wasteful frame rates, especially in those games where you really don't need more than 100 frames per second. According to Fnatic, Radeon Chill gives them the best of both worlds. They managed to save power, reduce the temperature and noise, but still didn't notice any performance difference in the game. Now AMD and Fnatic clearly have some kind of sponsorship tie-in deal going on here, so take that claim with a grain of salt. But certainly in my own case, I have yet to notice any difference while gaming with Chill on. Maybe surprisingly though, up until this point, Radeon Chill was voted number two feature by Radeon users. The next core technology is Enhanced Sync. I actually missed this one when it was introduced around the June or July timeframe. As a FreeSync user, it's not something that I was really all that interested in. But what Enhanced Sync does is it minimizes screen tearing while enabling responsive and smooth gaming at an unlocked frame rate. This is AMD's replacement for VSync. And what's new in Enhanced Sync is it now works with all Radeon GCN based products. So it's not limited to Vega or Polaris GPUs, all Radeon GCN based products. So that's going all the way back to 2011. Graphics cards like the 7970. It also now works on Vulcan, Notebook products, multi-GPU and also with Ifinity. And very surprisingly, in my opinion, Enhanced Sync was voted number one feature by Radeon users. I guess I'm kind of surprised by that because to me it doesn't really make a massive difference as I do use FreeSync. But if you don't have a FreeSync monitor, this one is certainly worth checking out. There is a very small latency penalty with Enhanced Sync, but nothing like as bad as what VSync is and it is probably not even noticeable. Enhanced Sync does actually complement FreeSync at frame rates above the FreeSync level. If your FreeSync monitor tops out at 144Hz, as soon as you go above that, Enhanced Sync should kick in and still provide you with tear-free gaming. And the final core technology is Radeon Relive. I discussed this at the beginning of the video. Radeon Relive is AMD's answer to Shadowplay, which allows you to capture, stream and share your greatest gaming moments. And this one has got a major, major update. Starting with the Connect tab, a whole new place to easily access and manage your Radeon Relive captures and share them on social media. Now basically speaking, whenever you record a bit of gameplay, you can now view and trim it in the Connect tabs gallery after which you then upload it to one of your accounts, for example YouTube or Twitch. The Connect tab also has a resource centre where you can get news and information about Radeon products, articles and how-to videos, that kind of thing. This one was pretty interesting though. Chat integration. Capture viewer reactions through in-game chat overlays. I'm not entirely sure if Shadowplay can do that or not. But I don't think so, but it's a pretty useful thing to have for streamers, especially if you've only got the one screen. What was interesting about this is that it is done in conjunction with Facebook Live Chat. Hmm. 
Another interesting point was the performance optimizations. Here we can see that Relive was already slightly ahead of Shadowplay, a bit further ahead in games like Rocket League, but the story goes that one of the Radeon Technology Group's engineers asked for permission to try out new algorithms, which apparently worked very well, and in a game like Rocket League there is effectively no overhead whatsoever, and you're looking at almost a 50% reduction in overhead in games like Battlefield 1. Clearly, in terms of performance at least, Relive is now far ahead of Shadowplay. You would of course also need to compare the quality of the output before you decide which one was really better. Relive now comes with Vulkan support, something I had been asking for for quite some time. You can now capture windows, borderless region capture support, capture only what you want to share, chroma key support, transparency for webcam backgrounds, and it also supports iFinity, something I'm interested in as I now have three monitors again. But for me, this is my personal favourite, the separate audio tracks. This is almost a must for people doing Let's Plays, as the last thing you want is your voice going over the in-game audio. Say if you are playing a game like, for example, Mass Effect, and it quickly cuts to a cutscene where Shepard starts talking and at the same time you're also talking, not really paying much attention, you've basically ruined that entire part of the game. But if your microphone track is in a separate audio track, you can then edit that part out, leaving only the in-game audio. For me this is a very nice thing, and I was actually using paid for software to get this functionality. And I've also introduced Stage 10 support, if you're interested in that, which is a third party browser based platform which takes all the complexity out of producing live streams and broadcast shows. So for sure a huge upgrade to Relive, which is now easily on par with Shadowplay or the GeForce sharing overlay. Here was an interesting one, FreeSync can now be enabled or disabled per game, and you can also pick three new UI themes. So here I am inside Mass Effect Andromeda which is a much better game than most people give credit, I feel. The environments especially are really, really nice. But what I really want to show is what happens when I press Alt and R, or in my case, Alt and O, and it brings up the Radeon overlay on the right hand side, where you can choose Radeon Relive, Performance Monitoring, Radeon Chill, Radeon FRTC, and Radeon FreeSync. Click on Relive and you can start recording, streaming, take a screenshot or more settings. For example, selecting your microphone or instant replay. Clicking on the performance monitoring tab, you can now see the metrics, which is currently set to be hidden during Relive. Now sadly I can't show you the metrics using OBS as it just doesn't show up, but I will show you it in Relive. First of all though, you're going to have to show in Relive and then click on show metrics. There's also performance logging if you want to do benchmarks. You can also select the metrics to show everything you would expect, it's very much like MSI Afterburner and by using the location tab you can choose where to display the metrics. Clicking on the chill tab and we can turn chill on or off and it's really interesting to watch the difference in power and frame rate, I'll show you that in a minute though. Here you can choose the minimum and the maximums, so for example if you never want to go below 70 frames per second, so long as your graphics card is capable of running that of course, then simply keep your chill minimum at 70. It goes all the way down to 30. Changing the chill max though, does note that FRTC has been changed to 115. I have asked AMD if chill and FRTC does add additional latency. Let's go back to 70 and 144. Again, frame rate target control, even free sync. You can even switch free sync on or off while in game. I'm not entirely sure why you would want to, but you can. But for me, one of the more interesting ones and one of the nicer abilities is being able to change color and contrast, brightness, your hue, your saturation while in game. It is really, really nice. Some games just need a little bit more saturation, I feel. And obviously, if a game is not bright enough, that's a pretty nice ability. I can't show you on the recording though, you're just going to have to take my word for it. If you don't like your new colour scheme, simply click the reset button. Instantly goes back to what it was. So that's a Radeon overlay, very very nice and it just works with every game. Now all of that that you just saw, you can of course do on the desktop as well. And what's really nice about it is, if you click on the gaming tab, you'll get to a list of the games you're playing, where you can click to create a profile and set stuff like chill individually. So for example, you might decide a game like Mass Effect Andromeda, 70 minimum and 144 maximum, that seems pretty reasonable for an RPG first person shooter. But if you've got a game like say Civilization 6, do you really need 144 frames per second? Do you even need 70 as a minimum? Why not set that to say 40? And maybe a maximum of say 100? Just make sure you enable the profile, 
and now the game should launch with those settings. So let's finish this off by launching Civilization 6. Right, so here we are, Civilization 6. Down the bottom left, you can see the overlay. It's a little bit small. I think they need to work on that, and I'm sure they will and maybe give some more options for bringing it out from the background. But a game like Civilization VI, turn-based strategy, you simply do not need 150 plus frames per second. It is just wasteful, and you can see here that my Vega Liquid Edition GPU power is around 260 watts. A complete waste of energy. But keep an eye on the FPS counter when I press F11 on the keyboard. F11 is the default for switching chill on or off. You can also use the overlay, of course, if you want, but I normally just use F11, and you hear these three beeps. And now you see an instant drop down to 85 frames per second before it slowly drops down to 40 frames per second. 260 watts down to around 60 watts. A massive power saving when your graphics card doesn't need to be overworking. And you can see that moving around with the arrow keys, the frame rate does increase. This is the chill algorithm and the frame rate picks a value in between the minimum and the maximum, depending on what you're doing in-game, pressing keys, moving your mouse, that kind of thing. But you can set it to whatever you want, say you want 100 frames per second instead, just set that up in chill and that's what you'll get with the corresponding increase or decrease in GPU power and temperatures. Possibly even more interesting, and I found this by complete accident last night while playing Civilization. I went to make a cup of tea, came back and noticed that my frame rate was down at 5 frames per second, and the power had dropped to around about 30 watts. So it seems that if you leave it alone for long enough, it will drop even further below the minimum frame rate. It knows that you're not at the PC, so why not just ramp it down as low as it can possibly go? And that's exactly what it does. I'm not actually sure if it's chill doing this or some other ability within the cards. We know that the AMD cards tend to burn that little bit more power than the equivalent Nvidia cards, but when you're using something like chill, you're gonna save a ton of power as well. And now that it works for every single game, I will probably just leave it on, because most of the games I play, I simply do not need the maximum frame rate, and if you do need a maximum frame rate at all times, simply turn it off in the profile. You should definitely give this one a go. For me, Radio and Chill is the best feature of Adrenaline. It's an absolutely fantastic feature, which will save you a ton of power, and also save you money in the long run. Right, so by this point you're thinking, what an incredible release this has been. But if I tell you I'm only on page 57 of 78 of this presentation, you can probably figure there's even more to come. And for some people, this next part will be their favourite part, as they can now bring their Radeon software out of their PC. Introducing AMD Link, the power to track, record and socialise at your fingertips. Everything you have seen in this video today can now be controlled by your phone or a tablet. You can now track all that information and control Radeon Relive from your phone. There's nothing difficult about connecting, you just need to scan the code and then access a menu through the navigation toolbar. Here we can see the performance monitoring, one touch capture, stream and instant replay with Radeon Relive and of course you can take screenshots and share while also checking out the news feed. You get it from the App Store or Google Play, currently available on iOS 10 Plus and Android 5.0 Plus. And finally we come to the end. As a recap, we get up to 15% more performance since last year's launch of Crimson Relive Edition, around 30 new or enhanced features, and AMD claims a satisfaction rating of 4.5 out of 5 for Crimson Relive. I get a feeling that number may even increase over this next year. With multiple features now compatible in every major API, Radeon Software Adrenaline Edition is by far and away the greatest update for owners of AMD Radeon graphics cards, and it will be interesting to see what they do next, and also how Nvidia responds. Right, so that's me done with this one. As usual, don't forget to check the video description for links, check out my Amazon shop if you're interested in buying a new graphics card. Stuff like this certainly makes Vega an awful lot more appealing to me, for sure. But that's it for now, I should be back this weekend with a mini ITX build. So look out for that one. I'll catch you later guys.